Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors. Our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. Welcome everyone. I hope you enjoyed your lunch and got some sunshine. Uh, next up is Daniel Stenberg, who will talk about how to curl better. So I simply hand it over to you, Daniel. Hi, thank you, Johan. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, looking into a uh, screen here talking to you. Um, <clears throat> so how to curl better. Uh, first, I just wanted them to let you know that I am Daniel Stenberg, of course. I uh, founded Curl back in 1998. I'm still the lead developer and I do uh, Curl development full time every day these days. I'm employed by Wolf SSL. We sell commercial Curl support for those who want it. I've been doing this for a long time and uh, I figured this would be a fun time for me to just share some tricks and tips about how to do curl. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of you know what curl is and what it isn't and what to do. And But I'm going to tell you anyway to sort of get everyone on board. And, and uh, I'm sure that there can be some tidbits for everyone. So first, a little bit of a roundup here, what curl is, what it isn't, and how, how, how it come to be the way it is for everyone because it's different for everyone and why is that, right? And then I'm going to run over a bunch of different options and a little bit how to and why they exist as they are and what options to not use so much perhaps and why so. And then of course, a little Q&A in the end. So if you have questions really about anything, Carl, but possibly about what I'm going to talk about. So go ahead and, and uh, fill them in into the, um, uh, question thing that uh, Johan is running here. So, and I will get to them in the end. I, I My plan is here to not to talk for a completely long time, but maybe 30, 40 minutes, and then we can have discussion on questions and answers. And uh, then, then I'm going to be out of your face and you can go on and do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. So, Curl done, just to get everyone on board here, it's an open source project. We do a command line tool and we do a library. We transfer data into, well, we actually do internet transfers, right? We specify the transfers as URLs. That's why the URL in the name. Curl can do a lot of things, it supports 24 different transfer protocols and a busload of features. And here are some of them that are sort of just packed on one screen. We can ignore that for now, but we can just agree that curl is sort of a Swiss army knife for internet transfers. It can do a lot of things. And I'm going to get uh, into some of those things today and, and uh, explain a little bit about, about the concepts and everything. But first, who makes curl and what, how, how did it end up like this? Or how, how is it like this like now? So curl is pretty much the result of 2200 contributors having helped out over the years. And the, Helping out means basically anything, writing docs, reporting bugs, coming with code, uh, stuff like that. And we're about 700, 770 authors who've written code merged into the Git repository. About 150 of these author, author, authors write something per year. And we're about 12, 10, 12 people that actually do 10 commits or more per year. And we're basically me doing that every year for the 22 years now. So a lot of people involved. So it's, it's, I might be sort of the captain of the boat, but I'm certainly not alone in this uh, venture. So Curl has to some extent already sort of conquered the world. Yeah, and the image here on the right is the NASDAQ building in New York with a fancy Curl command line <laughs> on the big screen there. So, but how, how come it conquered? How, how come it, we've been, sort of successful within air quotes so far. But we sort of created curl at the right time before or 
in the beginning of the sort of internet boost in the i started my first http stuff in 1996 the first curl version came in 1998 and then we sort of surfed on the internet big internet wave and it's been open source everyone can run it everywhere and it's really really portable so you can run it on whatever operating system or platform you want and of course it is also backwards compatible that means that it's easy for everyone to write something depend on it and it'll just keep on working you can upgrade your scripts and upgrade your curl over the years and it'll work the same way and, and you can be sure of that and it's also a very stable product so all of this makes it very easy for everyone to rely on curl and use curl for whatever you want so and it also then exists in many places we started in 98 it shipped ships actually it still ships in mac os since 2001 it's been in it's a um, in the stock Windows 10 since 2018. It's been in, it's in every Linux distribution since for since a long time. The first Linux distribution uh, added it in 99. And of course, it's available in all the other operating systems too. And if not, you can build it from source. And a lot of people also build it from source anyway for various reasons. And, <clears throat> and it also exists in a lot of different flavors, right? So there are millions, literally millions, probably billions of build combinations you can select uh, on and off among roughly 30 different third dependencies like TLS libraries, libraries for SSH, libraries for compression, libraries for uh, a lot of different things. So any random place you find curl, you, you may find that they've selected a different set of third party dependencies that they built curl with, and then it ends up differently. And we also have very frequent releases. We do releases every second month, basically. So given, given time and different distributions, different third party, then you will also see different versions of curl wherever you, you use curl, basically. It's very rarely the same in two places. <clears throat> it also supports, as I mentioned before, a lot of protocols and options. And today I'm only going to, I'm going to stick to talk to, about curl, the command line tool, and not the library curl. Library lib curl is, a, is vastly used by applications and devices and everything who wants to build internet transfer powers into their tools or, or devices. But I'm going to talk about the command line tool curl here, you know, the one you've seen in the prompt or running your scripts. Um, it knows a lot of protocols, 24. Transfer protocols, as I mentioned, but there are some other protocols, of course, under the hood. But today I'm going to talk about um, specifically one protocol. And of course, <laughs> since curl supports all these different protocols, all these different features, it has a lot of command line options, 230 of them as we speak. The 231st option is being added and will be included in the next release. So we're constantly adding new options to the command line to a lot of them as you can then imagine so i'm not going to talk about all of them today of course i'm going to talk about http and hps in this presentation i'm going to limit my explanations to a subset of the options to sort of some of the important ones some of the cool ones some, maybe some other ones you didn't really know and and uh, care about before so I wanted to show you this little graph i made the other day this shows the number of command line options over time in the curl project so we started out with 24 options, command line options back in 1998, and we are now at 230, 231 in a month. So yes, uh, growing fast. <clears throat> okay, but we're talking about HTTP and HTTPS today. So what is HTTP? HTTP is a this simple protocol. You've seen it a lot of times. You know it, what it is. Basically, here, here's you and there's the server. Um, and what do, we, uh, what do we do with that? Right, we send a request to the server, we send a method and a path, we send headers and possibly a body. And we get that back from the server, right? Response, response code, we get headers and a body. That is HTTP. And it looks like this if you look at it from a more protocol dump way, you know, here's a request with some headers and here's a response then with a response code at the top, the 200 there and headers and content, that's the body. You've seen it. This is the same thing. It basically has looked like this since uh, the mid nineties. It looked very similar before the mid nineties too, but uh, HTTP 1.0 introduced this look basically and that came 1996. 
So anyway, that's that's uh, that's HTTP then. And curl is minimal behavior by default. I call it, or I, I like to call it at least. So it means that um, it does only what it has to do and nothing else by default. So there's a basic set of headers and there's no fancy functionality. And so you have to, if you wanted, wanted to do something more than just the basic stuff, you add that uh, option and you tell it to do the other things. And basically all the options that add things or ask curl to do anything, they're on and off. So you, if you want to add two different things, you have to do with two different options and you can turn them on and off individually. Which means that you um, you have a really fine grain control exactly what curl will do and understand and not do it. on and off. If you just want the basic stuff, you don't tell it to do it. If you want it fancy, you ask for it. And of course, just a basic command and option thing. There are long options and, and short options and by name, right? So you could, for example, use dash s. I, I will say dash for that minus minus a sign in front of s here. I call it dash. <laughs> so you can use dash s instead of the longer version called dash dash silent. And a lot of um, options, of course, um, won't have the short option because 230, <laughs> 230 options, there are not enough letters in the alphabet to actually have short options for them all. But there are short op there are a lot of short options. I think there's a single letter left for the sh for short options, and the, that's a it's a, quite a quiz for you to come up with which of the letters aren't used yet. But so that's that's the options and how we use it. <clears throat> Whew, okay, a zip coffee. Here we go. So we start out with curl, the most simple way you can do it. You just ask. You want to do an HTTP GET. That's curl, and you enter, in this case, not even a URL. This is just a host name, right? But curl will assume that this is actually a URL, so it'll transform it to a URL for you. Maybe you meant HTTP colon slash slash example.com, and it'll do that for you. And you get the response body on the screen, because you didn't tell it where to go. So it got just sent to standard out. So this is more like how. Um, Maybe uh, Unix commands are typically sort of usually usually work. Send everything to standard out, but you can then also send, get to show, see the response header. So in the, so in this case, we have, we now write the full URL here: https colon slash example dot com, and we add the dash i to get the in, the headers included in the output. So then we get the response code, we get headers back, and we get the body. This is still a GET request over HTTP. Fancy. So yep, now you get to see the headers and you get to see the body. <clears throat> and of course, if you wanted to do something with the body, what if you get some fancy content here? If you would, for example, get JSON, you could pipe it into the JQ tool, JQ being a cool tool to handle JSON, and it'll show it in a, in a fancy way, like this, right? Instead of just everything on a single line without any new lines in a blurb. If you would do this with an image or a, a movie or a sound clip, you would, of course, not want that on your terminal. You want to save that to a file. <clears throat> but you can also check the URL, for example, with a head request. Just ask the server about details of the resource. So you ask with a capital I, dash capital I, and it'll set a head, and you won't get it in body. You will only get the response uh, headers. Gets just some info. You can see the size, the date, the server info, and whatever. And it's a 200, so you know the resource exists. And there's no body because head doesn't return a body. It never does. OK, easy peasy, just the two simple little things. Um, and, and again, curl only does what you ask it for. So it, does everything as basic as possible until you ask for something more. So if you, for example, do like this, you want to you query a, a resource that's redirected. Redirected being in HTTP lingo then for it should actually ask for another resource rather than this. This has moved or uh, you want to go to the other place. So if you ask, you ask for head here, you, you get the content. You get the 302, which means a redirect, one redirect 
kind. There are several different kinds, but we can ignore that for now. And it says a location, which actually is then the pointer to the new place. But uh, yeah, and there's no body. But curl won't go there. You will still get, just get this because you haven't asked curl to follow the redirect. Just, you just basically investigated the sign here. You didn't follow the sign. So instead, if you wanted to actually follow the request, you would ask, you would add the, in this case, the dash capital L, which is then asks, it asks curl to follow the redirect. And then you would get both first the redirect code, and then it'll follow the redirect and you will get the sort of the final destination. And it would actually follow a lot of redirects here. If you, if it, if this would be redirected several steps, it would follow all the steps. Um, which could be a lot of them, and uh, it has a loop detection, so it, it'll actually stop after a certain amount of uh, redirects, so it, we won't do it infinitely. So this is how it works then, right? So you have to ask for everything to enable it, otherwise it won't do it. Another little fancy thing that, uh, that is uh, sometimes forgo forgotten about with curl is that it supports what we call, all right, no body, uh, what we call URL globbing, <clears throat> which is a feature that some shells provide on their own, but some don't, and curl supports it natively. So you can, for example, get a range of documents like this automatically, uh, one to nine here, all those web pages in one go, and it'll send them, in this case, all to standard out, which is probably not what you want. Or you can get everything with a zero prefixed, one to 99, zero prefixed, or you can get A to Z in an alphabetical range like this. And you can even do more fancy stuff. You can set, st uh, take every other step from one to nine. So it'll just step by two and step, step by one, one by one. Or you can do that with letters as two. This steps three letters at a time. And uh, in, in, in case you don't want this saved to uh, sort of sent to standard out or the terminal, which you rarely want, right? So you can save them like this. And this is a fancy little thing. So you can see here the the pound sign, um, the hashtag in the in the dash o option here is this for the saving. So it'll actually get that parameter from the range in the URL. It'll, it'll be the first range will then be put there. So this will save files, save underscore one dot html, save underscore two dot dot html, save, save underscore three dot html, and so on. And you can also uh, do comma separated. Uh, strings like this. So it'll get this different ham cheese and pineapple images and save them um, as JPEGs like this. And of course, you can combine everything in one command line if you want to. So you can ask for both uh, ranges of different kinds and the separated comma separated lists. And you could, of course, save that in different output files too. So you could it could end up in a real large amount of transfers if you want to. <clears throat> and sometimes when you, you do all this fancy stuff with curl, you will find yourself in a position where curl doesn't do exactly what you want, and you're wondering wh why doesn't it work? What should I do to fix my command line? So then you add this dash v, and it'll show you a lot of details. V for verbose, of course. It's actually dash dash verbose if you do it in the long version. And it'll tell you about things like, IP addresses, protocol details, TLS details, and then you will see, also see the actual request going out. You won't actually see the request body in this case, but, but uh, a lot of details. And then you will get the headers back, and you will get the body. As, um, well, in this case, the command line saves the body to dev null, so you won't see it. But always remember, dash V is a, is a key to, to solving your issues. You, that helps you see what is going sent and uh, help you understand what's wrong and right with your command line. And when that is not enough, you don't add more Vs. I know some Unix tools or Linux tools, they, you, know, you can add more Vs to get more verbose. And a lot of people then add more Vs, like VVV or whatever. But with curl, that doesn't change anything. You can have as many Vs as you want, but it won't change anything. You won't get more data. So what you want to do instead uh, <laughs> is, is uh, I'll show you later, uh, because there, there's more tricks to getting more info. But uh, I just wanted to say other, a few other ways to extend your HTTP request is when you want to add 
provide custom HTTP headers in your request. Maybe you want to send a magic disco header in your request, uh, or you want to set a special user agent in your request because let's uh, be honest, some servers will uh, deny your request if it sees that it's curl. But you can say that you're disco in the night and then you might get your response back. And you can even remove the, the user agent header completely by, by doing it like this without having any right side of the, of the colon, it'll remove the header from the request. And you can do this little magic thing by putting a semicolon there, it'll send a blank field for this uh, header in the request. So you can sort of this way, you can handicraft your request to look exactly the way you want or mimic another uh, client browser, whatever you want to do. If you want to post basic data, like for example, you want to send an update to a web page or login or um, anything. In this case, for example, I want to send my name is Daniel to this server. I just put it with dash D and it makes a simple post to that server and you get a response and everything back. In this case, we have the dash I. So we get, a, uh, get the headers back on the terminal and we get the content too, because we didn't send the content anywhere. We can post a file, which just, we just prefixed it with an at sign. So at file name, and it'll send that as a post. We can uh, <clears throat> post from a standard input. So we just pipe whatever, and we post with an um, at dash and it'll post the standard input instead. Or we can ask curl to treat the files binary so don't ignore uh, new lines or anything and just send it exactly as is. Or we can uh, use that and send a binary from a file as well. And we can add a header, a custom header. Like in this case, if you want to send JSON, sometimes you want to tell the server that this is actually JSON coming in the post. Then you can do it like that. <clears throat> Um, and then when people start doing things like this, you often want to do, for example, you also want to do post is one way to send data to a HTTP server, put is another. Put is usually a way to sort of replace, instead of sending data to a resource, it's, you, it's actually more meant to replace a resource with this content. So they, they're similar, but slightly different in, in semantics, but then you do it like this anyway. You just use the uppercase T and you put a local file like this. And it'll <coughs> push, and in this case, we had dash I again, so we get response headers and we get response body because we didn't save it. And if we are not happy with post and put and get and head, we can change the method we send to the server with the capital X option. So we, uh, so we do that this time. So we want to send a put, but we want to change the HTTP method. So we send it as a swoosh instead, like this. Easy peasy. But here's, here's the key here. The dash X should be used sparingly and only for the cases where you really want to use something else than what curl can do by itself. So you shouldn't... It's a bit a little bit tricky thing to use there. So I'm going to explain why. So using capital X too much can lead to pain. Um, so for example, here's the, here's the typical case that we see a lot of people. This is one of the most uh, abused uh, curl command line cases in the, uh, on the internet. You want to post something here, like post data. You send it to this site, and we add this dash capital X here for, for no good reason, because this will do a post anyway without us saying so, like that. We, we don't need that, right? So. <clears throat> then we do like this. Oh, it, we want to follow a redirect as well. So we add this dash capital L at the end. We want to follow the redirect that we get back from this post. But eh, this is probably not what you want. And this is a very common mistake because now it'll send post in the, when following the redirect as well, which in often cases this wouldn't do otherwise. So um, basically avoid it. So it means that capital X means that it'll use that in all requests, even when it follows redirects. <clears throat> Otherwise, the redirect code will tell curl what method to use, and dash X will override that, and you will be sorry and unhappy, and it'll not work the way you want to. So only use dash capital X if it uses if you want a different method than curl would use itself to put 
shortly and, and, and uh, just briefly, and just remember this, avoid it. Don't use dash capital X unless you really have to, but you very rarely have to. So, okay, going further and faster into cookies. Cookies are just headers, really. And we already seen how we can add headers and uh, in, in, in requests, but cookies are more sort of advanced headers. So they're really name value pairs we send in headers or we get them from a server, we can send them back from a client if it matches sort of conditions like uh, host name and path parts and everything. And again, curl doesn't know about cookies unless you ask curl to know about cookies. And then it works like this. You, for example, um, all right, first I wanted to mention that, yeah, you need, you actually have separate options for reading cookies from a file and writing cookies to a file and it, sort of saving cookies after a session. So you would do like this. <clears throat> uh, here, here's, here's a find an example, save all the cookies from this site. So you would ask, you would request a page from this site, any cookie you get back or cookies, a number of cookies, it'll save in the cookie jar. And then you could, for example, do another request to the same site and read back the cookies that you saved in the previous invoke, and it'll use, send those cookies back, exactly like a browser would or, or any other HTTP web client would do. And so, and uh, you could use both of them at the same, in the same command line, and it'll, it'll work with cookies. And here's an example. I just wanted to show you roughly how such a cookie jar would look like. This is just a very basic, simple, fake cookie. It would look like this. It doesn't really matter what all the fields means, but I just wanted to show you that there's a text file with the contents, with the cookie, the, the contents of the cookie jar. So okay, and, and in a typical login case, if you wanted to, like how you log into a website with a browser, if you would do that with curl, you would typically combine a post and saving cookies. So then you would do like this, you would, save cookies, for example, when you go to the login form of a special site, your own favorite site, and on that login form, maybe you want to provide your username and password, and you want to make sure that you use the cookies and you save the updated cookies. And in this case, bam, if you get logged in by that request, you can in your third request here, actually request data on that site, on that site as a logged in user. This is um, sort of the, just the basic steps how, how most modern websites actually work these days. You log in with a post and you keep, keep session as a cookie. It'll be slightly more complicated sometimes when the site uh, uses a lot of JavaScript and other things that ruins your day. But okay, this is the basic concept at least. And today, of course, as I uh, mentioned or seen or ev everybody knows, we're using HTTPS, right, for everything these days. So you want to try to get stuff from your own site with HTTPS instead of HTTP, but then you run into problems, right? If you do it like this, if you try to get a web page from your uh, local host, for example, you will see that you have certificate problems because your site on your local host won't have um, you don't have the certificate for, for this IP address, right? So it won't work to do it like this. So then you can ask curl to ignore the certificates checks if you want to, but uh, we don't <laughs> condone that. And it, uh, uh, it doesn't work for cookies either. So if your host actually is named something, it doesn't work when you uh, access it with the wrong name. <clears throat> then you can do it like this. You can provide a host header to the site. And then, then this actually makes it work with cookies, but it doesn't work with virtual servers because uh, virtual servers, when you do it with TLS, you want it to have the proper server name in the, uh, already in the TLS handshake and this doesn't. So it doesn't work for that either. So curl has another way to do it. And this is the fancy way to do it. So you add the dash dash resolve. This is basically a way to provide the, an, an IP address for a host name that you make up, or rather you provide the IP address for whatever host name you want. Like this, if you wanna, you wanna access example.com on your own host, because you run your own, you wanna have your run your own uh, copy of the example.com server on your local host, you can just tell curl that this is the IP address for example.com right now. So this is, makes it work with, uh, 
with TLS and certificates, and it works with cookies, and it, virtual, it, it works even if you have virtual setup. So if you run more than one server on your local host, it'll work for that too. It's a pretty convenient way. You can even, there's also another option that is called connect to, which is slightly different, but achieves almost the same thing mostly. So here you can actually tell curl to connect to another host name instead of the original host name and even change port number if you want to. So you can do a lot of tricks if you want to access a server on a temporary site, like when you develop the site or when you want to test just one particular load balancer perhaps out of a set of many so you you know where to go and you don't want to use the uh, ordinary dns uh, round robin or whatever it does so okay you can do a lot of fancy things so let's see other fancy things <coughs> oh right let's just pause and say don't use dash k to disable certificate checks uh, no avoid it so you want to do get more details out of your command line uh, curl tool. So then <clears throat> I mentioned before how using more Vs in uh, the verbose option doesn't help you because it won't add more data. So instead, curl provides the, this option called dash dash trace ASCII. There's also actually one called da just dash dash trace. They're similar and they add a lot more detail. They basically send everything they show you everything that curl sends in and out, sends out and gets in. Um, so it'll help you identify exactly what is going on. So like in this case, you can see this is a simple post sent to this server, example.com. And then you can see like this, um, exactly what kind of a request looks like, what kind of data it sends, that it sends the exact send this data as a post. Down there, you see the third line from the bottom. You can see the post data again, set it out. And of course, this is a simple case. But in more complicated cases, you will you can verify that the post or that the request looks exactly the way you want it and intended it to be. And you can see every single byte that curl gets back to. And you can verify that it actually is it matches whatever you think it should look like. <clears throat> so, other ways to extract sort of information from your request or transfers when you use curl, the command line tool is the funny write out option, dash w. So you use it like this. It's just a string with a bunch of variables for you to um, get data out of curl with. So you use it like this, basically write out, and then the text, and you have variables in there to use. And you have fancy and fun variables. There's a whole range of them. I think there's around 30 different ones so far. You can get content type, you can get a HTTP version, remote IP address, local IP address, you can get download speed. And we're introducing the, the JSON variable that uh, I know a lot of people are looking forward to, which, which will output all of these variables as a JSON object. So soon you will get everything as a JSON object. So to information is not actually data from the transfer, but it's information ob about the most recent transfer, like this. You would use write out JSON like this, uh, dash W, and this percent uh, brace, JSON brace, which is a way of just uh, specifying that we want that variable output. And it sends the variable output to standard out here. So we save the, the actual file to the with dash O, we save it to file on disk, and we pass this in this case to JQ again because JQ is a cool JSON tool, and it'll look like this. Maybe not color coded like this, but anyway, it'll pretty print it. That's JQ doing it. And so it, there's this is JSON coming from curl uh, with metadata about the particular transfer from that URL right now. Nice, right? <clears throat> so running forward, right? So <laughs> what if you do all of this and you think, well, I want to do um, a tool of this instead. Instead of running my command lines, I want to write a libcurl using tool that does the same thing. And then curl has the fun command line. One of my favorite command line options to curl is the dash dash libcurl option. Uh, so you use it like this. You write the curl command line. Whatever curl command line you can think of, really. You add all the options, and then you add this dash dash libcurl and the source code dot C. And curl will then generate that source code. And then you compile that source code and you run it. And it'll, that, uh, that 
application will then perform the same operation as your command line did like this if you if in this example if you would do that just getting that example.com url it would generate a source code that looks roughly like this it's a template it do it, it does the transfer in this case a very simple transfer and it doesn't add anything magic but that's the, that's the header that's the source code for it and you could just build it immediately and run it and you have your own libcar using application and it's a really good kickstart for, because whatever you want to do of course you don't i mean you want to do something slightly more advanced than this possibly but this is a really good way to get going get started with your libcar using application and of course <laughs> and here's a slightly advanced whatever you want to do like with you you a lot of use cases come from you know you you sit somewhere with your browser you've done something you want to make sure that you can redo that operation with curl after you've done it the same way the, the browser would do it like log into that site or download that file or view that image and then all browsers nowadays firefox chrome edge and safari they all have this copy as curl option these are three different screenshots they're fairly old by now but so it basically probably looks a little bit different uh, these days in all of them but all of the major browsers they have this copy as curl option in their networking uh, debug tools so if you go into this debug tools section of the browser and you can see all the different requests for a website and you can select one of those lines and you can go into the right click it and select copy as curl and then you get um then you get a command line copied to to your clipboard for a command line that would use curl to get that request exactly the way the browser would do it basically like this bam here's an example of firefox doing a request and as an example actually actually this uh, it gets the curl front web page and the exact same web page from from chrome it looks like this uh, they they're they're long and a bit overly complicated but this is because it sets the exact same header set that the browsers are using anyway that's the way it works so if you have a, a command line uh, if you have a request you want to mimic with curl from a browser it's an easy way to get started and of course after you do this you usually go through this list of, of options and trim it a little bit and make sure that it actually does exactly what you want to and not the way you got it copied from the beginning so it's it's the first step it's not the final step and if that's not enough you can do like this um, you can do uh, enter the ssl keylog file way of spying on your browser or we're spying on curl and making sure that everything looks the same especially if you for example want to mimic uh, several steps of operations that your browser does and you want to make sure that curl does the same thing maybe then um, you can snoop on them and make sure that and verify that they look and behave the same right so you just need these things you need wireshark and you need this environment variable called ssl keylog file all in uppercase no spaces and you <clears throat> tell both well like this you specify to wireshark where to load tls secrets and ssl keylog file tells the tools where to store the secrets so basically they should point to the same file and curl and your browser can save those secrets in that file and make sure that uh, wireshark uses it like this you set the environment variable to path path name like perhaps like this tls key i just made up a path here you can use whatever path you want and then you run curl so and that of course is doesn't help you right but then um you need to have Wireshark fired up in, on, on next to that. And then in Wireshark, you go into this pre-master secret log file setting, which is under the SSL um, protocol section. And then you so that tell Wireshark, read your secrets from here. And when you do that, you can then enable Wireshark to snoop on the network traffic, and it will automatically um, decrypt and analyze the TLS traffic for you, even if it's completely I mean, it's TLS, so it's no longer encrypted and hidden from Wireshark, so you can actually see the protocol stuff uh, in detail. In this case, the screenshot here is an HTTP2 transfer um, 
well, a lot of HTTP2 frames, just showing off how it looks like when you analyze TLS traffic. And it, you can do that with curl, and you can do that with, uh, with the browser. Uh, both Firefox and Chrome support that SSL keylog style. <clears throat> OK, and, and um, of course, curl supports a lot of different protocols. And we talk about HTTP here, but curl also supports a lot of different HTTP protocols. HTTP 1.0 shipped in 96, as I mentioned before. Headers look that way. We learned how headers look like back in the 90s. And um, well, in uh, 2015, we shipped HTTP 2. And HTTP 2 sends uh, headers slightly differently. But we, we like to pretend that it doesn't in curl. So even though there's, there are now different HTTP protocols, HTTP 3 is coming. Curl supports it uh, in an experimental way now. Curl still pretends that all headers look and work like they did in HTTP 1.1 or 1.0. So all headers will appear as they've always done. So whatever you tell Curl to use the HTTP versions, if you ask it to use 1.0, 1.1, 2, or 3, the headers will you pass to it, and the headers you will get back, they'll still look the same way. And the actual HTTP version will be sort of you won't really have to bother about that. It'll say which HTTP version it uses, so you will know it. But you, the headers and everything, it look the same, pretty transparently. So it'll it'll make sure that even if your servers upgrade to version two or version three, and your curl scripts do as well, you still can use the headers the same way as you did your headers uh, 20 years ago. HTTP three support is experimental. It works uh, mostly. You should try it out. It's fun, but it's not uh, the final thing. <clears throat> oh, right. And if you want to do adding even more spice to this, if you think you want to do a lot of different things on the same command line, and, and a lot of people do, right? Because if you do it on the same command line, we can reuse a lot of caches, reuse connections and everything. Like in this example here, we can send the same post to do to two different URLs. Send user, <laughs> the user is Daniel, to both these URLs. But maybe I want to send a post first and then a get from another URL. And then I could do it like this. I add the dash dash next option in between, which will, which will pretty much reset the command line option parser and go back to the default. So in this particular example we're looking at on here on the screen, we first send a post to the, to the example.com domain, reset all the command line options, and then we have a get to the next one because the that's the default uh, method. We can also sort of reverse the option and do get first and do the dash dash next. And then we send a post to the second URL. And of course, there's no limit to the number of uh, URLs or dash dash next that you can use. So you can um, use that a lot if you want to or feel the need to. And then, of course, it, since it doesn't quit here in between, it'll reuse connections and caches and everything. It'll be much faster than doing multiple uh, command line invokes. <clears throat> so, and by this, I hope that I've sort of uh, teased your imagination a little bit about what to do with curl and how to figure out how to do it and use it better and uh, everything. Uh, I realized that I've only sort of touched on what? 12, 14, 18 different options and there are uh, all many more. Many of the options are of course protocol specific so they won't really matter for HTTP. But these, um, I hope you, uh, I at least showed you some of them and some of these things uh, was actually new to you and interesting. So uh, get in there, uh, start using more curl and uh, avoid dash capital X and um, don't use dash K either, but um, try out everything. And then um, of course, all that I said here in my little presentation here today, all of this and a lot more is also documented and detailed in this little book, Everything Curl, which is uh, our my attempt to document most of the curl project options and curl command line and everything in curl, really. So that's why it's called Everything Curl. So, and it's available online in, in PDF and the, and the web version. So go read that if you want to dig into all of these details even more. And of course, uh, feel free to help out in the project. We always need and appreciate your help to get even better code, bug reports, patches, 
yelling, whatever you think you <laughs> we need in the project. So help out. Thank you. Any questions here? Yeah, exactly. Hi. Thank you very much for this talk with so many deep insights and tricks. We do actually have quite a lot of questions, so let's get to them. So the first question is by Drew Fusitny. Are there situations where it is better or easier to use wget? Yes, there are, of course. <laughs> and, uh, let me just sidestep that for one second and say that we we, we, uh, we don't have such much of a big of a wget curl war, really. But it's, I like to entertain that uh, notion. It fe feels fun. But you know, of course, I, I was I would say that wget, of course, it has this recursive option, which is primarily one that curl really doesn't have. So if you want to download one resource that links to other resources, like images or style sheets or whatever, and you want to get an entire website or whatever, then wget is, of course, your friend and curl will make that really hard for you. So that I would say that's the obvious case. Okay. Okay, great. Then the next question is, how did you decide on the name and the pronunciation of curl? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, so, so uh, it, of course, has a longer history. Since I started working on yeah, I started on the when I started working with HTTP client, I called it HTTP GET from the beginning because I based it on another tool called HTTP GET. So I started off; it was, I didn't even start it myself. So and then it it grew into URL GET when it got more support than HTTP. And then I one day I started supported upload as well. And then URL GET turned out to be a bad name as well because it wasn't only GET anymore. And then I wanted to uh, I wanted to uh, change the name in one way to make sure that I didn't have to ch keep changing it all the time. And then I wanted it to be short. I wanted to have URL in the name because it worked with URL. And then, I, yeah, you know, names are really hard. I, I came up with URL. Maybe the C could stand for client and it could also see, st stand for just C as in sort of a fun pun, as in C the URL. Um, so that's where I went with, with curl. And, and of course, a pronunciation-wise, it felt like uh, how else would you pronounce curl? It's an it's actually an English word, and you call it curl, curly, curl. So of course, it would be pronounced curl. That that was easy. Okay, okay, great, thank you. Then the next one here is by Jesper. How do you test curl before releasing it, considering all options and build variants? Oh, that's a good question. It's really hard. I would imagine. Uh, I would start a uh, preface. So we have a, a huge amount of CI. We have a huge amount of test cases, and we test a lot of different build combinations and on a lot of different platforms and tools and everything. And of course, we we do that to a large extent. But no, we don't test all combinations, and we don't test all possible platforms, and we don't. So. <clears throat> no, we do as best as we can, but there are, of course, white spots that we don't test enough. And usually we try to test all the popular combinations on, on all the popular platforms, and hopefully that'll cover it good enough. But of course, there will always be some gaps that we miss out. I think usually we, we end up in a pretty good place. Okay. Then the next one is does curl from Windows have all these options? Isn't it just an alias to some PowerShell command? Uh, uh, first, curl the project that that I participate in, that I founded. We of course make curl exactly the same on all platforms. So curl on Windows, it actually will work exactly the way it does on all the other platforms. So. And we've shipped curl on Windows for, well, maybe we didn't do it the first few months, but we've done it for almost 22 years. And then along when we made curl popular everywhere, suddenly one day Microsoft in their infinite wisdom decided that they should create an alias in PowerShell that's called curl that is almost completely a broken curl that doesn't work like curl, but you could make an alias. And I don't know why it was never a good idea. I've complained to them, and I, I uh, somebody might know that I also sent them a pull request to remove that alias when they made the code <laughs> open, but they rejected my pull request. But but anyway, 
since then, since they then they've also uh, nowadays they ship the real curl. So since uh, March 2018, which I mentioned in my talk here, they shipped the real curl, not the alias. They, they shipped the alias as well, but they shipped the real curl as well. So the, it's this our code shipped in Windows 10 since two years back. And that works the same way as curl does everywhere else with the same caveats that they, of course, have selected a set of dependencies and build options for their particular build. So when you run curl on Windows 10, it might not works exactly the same as when you do run curl on your Linux, Linux distro or something, depending on the version and, and the particular build options they used when they built curl in the Microsoft HQ. Okay, thank you. Then if you had the opportunity to restart today, would you still have chosen C as your programming language? Good question. It depends uh, if I wanted curl to become what it is today, I, there, I, there wouldn't be any other choice, I would say, because, um, I, because of many reasons, because curl runs on 70, has, has run or is running on 72 different operating systems. It's run on 20 different CPU architectures. There's just nothing comes even close when, when running on this funny new uh, computer languages. So sure, I could re rewrite it in Rust if I was happy with the three major platforms, or maybe five, uh, and so on. So sure, that could have been. But if you, if I wanted, if you, if I wanted this ten billion installations or something that we count on now, I, I would say that C would be mandatory to get that coverage. And uh, we have a lot of our users using it in tiny devices on on obscure operating systems and everything. So I think. C has been one key factor to why curl is as widespread as, as it is today. So yeah, it depends on what I wanted to do. If I if I, I I'm I would stick to C. Okay. And the next one by Hendrik. Does curl support globally set options like the wgetrc file for wget? Yes, it does. I mean, the curl, curl command line tool has a .curl RC file that it supports for reading options at start. Okay, great. And then Frank asks, are you a fan of the dash LOL option? <laughs> Hi, Frank. Uh, yes, of course, I'm a fan. So yeah, since, since curl has a lot of options and um, also, also, since you can basically all the letters are are used for something, you can make up fun sentences by making sure that you just. <laughs> so the LOL is one of those fun things. I, I remember one of my my favorite options. I think it's a Stack Overflow option when someone said that the the dash OJ is a killer option, and I think that's uh, <laughs> my favorites. <laughs> well, for the younger ones in the audience, you might not catch that, but still. <laughs> so, so yeah, you can make up really funny, and and the, the the same thing that you know when you add more V's to dash V, it doesn't add anything. If you add more capital L's, it doesn't add anything more either. So L O L is of course the same as L O, uh, capital ones. So yes, you can make up funner, funnier. Um, just okay. command lines by adding more letters to it. So yes, it's a it's a game we have. Yeah. I know Frank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then Drew says dash that slip curl is great. Thanks for the tip. And then I have a personal question. How do you approach UX of the command line tool with so many options? Does it grow organically? Do you sometimes break break backwards compatibility or how do you do that? We don't break backwards compatibility, which is one of our problems. That, oh, uh, I mean, but that's both a bless blessing and a curse, right? So it's a blessing for all the users that have something running since 15 years, so they, they don't have to upgrade their scripts. It's a bit of a curse when we come up with or understand that maybe we did it really bad five years ago. There wasn't such a good idea to do it that way. Now we have a much better idea how we wanted it, wanted it to be, but we can't really remove the old stuff because that's the way it's been working for a while. So it's... So therefore, the UX is not ideal. It sort of it grows organically, and it's grown in a few different ways and and and, and styles. So it's uh, I, I think it hurts usability 
in one one way, but it then also benefits because it also it has the great benefit that every all the command lines that ever you worked before they still work. So if you actually have you know if I wrote a, a mailing list post. 12 years ago explaining how something worked. It still works that way. So documentation is really easy to maintain as well, right? Because it's it's the same thing and we can just add the documentation all the time. And we basically don't ever risk that we actually have to go back and find outdated documentation and make sure that we document the new way. Well, we have a little bit of that anyway, but sort of not so much at least. So I think it's ah, it's both good and bad. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. That was all the questions. And thanks again for the great talk. I at least learned a lot. <laughs> so, okay, uh, then take over, Johan. Yeah, thank you very much to, to both Daniel and all our viewers and all our sponsors. And with that, I would like to thank our speakers, our sponsors, and all our viewers.